Hello and welcome to Miniature Realms and welcome to another painting tutorial. So today we have one of Warlord Games' Epic Battles ACW 13.5 millimeter scale um, uh, uh, cavalrymen. Um, so there we, uh, it's a set that you can use for both sides. There's a bit of a quite a few mixing poses. I have done an unboxing of these, which I'll pop a little link in now if you want to go and look at the miniatures if you're not familiar with them. Um, and I'm going to be um, painting this as a, a Confederate um, cavalryman. Um, I've already done the rest of the unit. Um, I think I've shown off some of the finished models before on a previous Epic Battles vlog and if you are unfamiliar with the vlog series I do um, I'm going to put a link in now for that. Um, I've been uh, doing a lot of the American Battles stuff since the Epic stuff since it um, was released earlier in the year. Um, enjoying building up both forces and I've got a big project going on there so if you're new to the channel and haven't seen those please go and have a look at those as well. Um, and this is um, maybe the third or fourth painting tutorial in the you know, sort of linked to that release. I've done a painting tutorial for the Confederate Infantry, which is the first one I did, which I'll put a link in now. And then there's a reason for that, and I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, and I've done a, um, a painting tutorial for Union Infantry as well, painting tutorial for Zouaves and for Artillery. So this, I think, would be the fifth. So as you can see, the miniature is already primed. Now, I primed it black first, and then I did a zenithal prime of grey and then I've dry brushed with white and there's a reason for that. The reason is I'm going to be using predominantly citadel colour contrast paints um, as the base layer and by doing the pre-highlight in the zenithal style it means that I can get a good base and mid-tone and just need to highlight a little bit afterwards. Of course, you don't need to highlight at all. I will be aiming for very much for a tabletop look for a miniature this size. Um, I'm not gonna go too far, but um, having painted the rest of the unit already, they do take a little bit longer than, than you'd expect. Um, and even though they're smaller scale, there's enough detail on them and the cavalry, and it's, a lot of people have a bit of a love-hate relationship with painting cavalry, myself included. Um, horses seem to be as hard to paint as they are to draw. If you've ever tried to draw a horse and you're not a, a professional artist, then you'll probably appreciate that as well. So I mentioned earlier that um, I'll put a link in for the first um, painting tutorial, and that's because I actually show you how I zenithal highlight with the airbrush. If you're unfamiliar with that, please do go and check out that video, that initial Confederate infantry painting tutorial, which I posted a link in a moment ago. But anyway, let's crack on with the miniature. So I've done a mixture of colors. I'm going to go with a dark brown for this horse. So I'm going to start with contrast wildwood. And I'm gonna put this all over the, in the main skin area, the body of the horse. So legs and all. There we are, that's the first stage done, so the wild wood all over. Now that was straight out of the pot, haven't diluted it at all. Just like any paint ranges, if you haven't used contrast paints before, some require more dilution than others. Some have stronger pigment than others, so you have to kind of play around and get used to them. I find with wildwood, at least for this application here, for what I wanted to do, it gives the uh, gives the right kind of coverage. Whereas a solid brown all over, um, but there is just enough in change in tone that it, it's doing its job as a contrast paint, and partly that's because of the, 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 the zenithal highlight beforehand. If that was over a flat white, it would probably look like a slightly flatter color. So it's giving me a shadow, so a base tone and a mid tone, and I will just add a highlight at the end. The next stage will be contrast black templar. I'm gonna use quite a lot of this. So I'm gonna do all of the horse's um, kit. So it's straps, it's, it's, it's leather parts, the saddle, the shoes or boots of the, the rider here, um, are some of the bags and things as well, and including the mane and the tail and the horse's hooves. So it's quite a large stay, stage here. Just like the previous one, I'll speed it up and, and cut to when it's finished before I speak to you again. So that's all the contrast black templar 
um, put down. So that's quite a lot of the base coat down already. I'm going to leave a lot of the actual horseman, the rider, as is. That's part of the reason for doing the, the grey as part of the Zenithal. Um, and we'll see that when we get to that stage. Um, the next part I'm going to do is there's just an under, I don't know what any of these parts are called, so you have to forgive me, but underneath the main saddle, um, there's an under piece of cloth. Um, and I've been using a sort of a mixture of a few different colors and I like to break up the, the browns and grays and things. So I'm going to be using some uh, contrast Blood Angels Red for this section. So that's the red in. Next stage, I'm going to paint in the cavalryman's trousers with contrast Talisar Blue. Now the trick to this will be to wipe a little bit away when it's still wet, just to give the appearance of slight fading or highlighting. There's one leg in, rinse the brush off. And then with a clean brush. Just take a little bit off. So that's the blue in. You can just see the slight highlight where I've wiped away the edge. Just to make it look a bit faded. The next thing is going to be his hat. Now, it could be black, it could be grey there. I want to go in and say that it's a, a, a brown hat for this one. So I'm going to go contrast gore grunt of fur. Again, very similar to the blue. While it's still a bit wet, I may will take some of it back off just to really build on the pre shade or the pre highlight here that I've got from the presentable highlighting and from the dry brush. thing I'm going to do is actually used grey sear so it's a base from Citadel. Um, any lightish grey will do for this. Um, I've just found one that matches the kind of general tone that I get after the pre-highlight and all I'm really doing is thinning the paint slightly and, and going in and kind of touching up the jackets here. See some areas that are very, very dark, and that's fine for shadow. There might be an area that, that wouldn't be in the shadow. You just want to lighten it up somewhere. I also tidy up. So sometimes when I'm doing my initial stages, I may get a little bit of paint somewhere it shouldn't be. So it's just brightening up certain areas. There isn't actually an awful lot to do on this miniature. Sometimes I've made a bit more of a mistake than I have on others, um, or there's a slightly darker area. But I, I do want to just lighten up across the back of the shoulders here because the light would definitely be catching there more and the dry brushing and the pre-highlight that I did with the airbrush hasn't quite picked up on all of that. So there we go, hat's blocked in. Now the next stage is using some contrast Nasdrag yellow. I'm just gonna pick out the, the cuffs and little bits of yellow that will be on his jacket. So that's the yellow blocked in as well. Now on to contrast darko flesh, and I bet you can guess where that's going to go. So that's the flesh added. And uh, the next stage is Cryptic Armor Shade and the gloss version. And this isn't a contrast paint. This is a rich, warm brown color. Um, I've never used it before this project and I've not actually used it on anything else but the War Games Illustrated who, who when they gave away the free plastic sprue for this game um, recommended using this over a pre-shaded or pre-highlighted miniature to go over the weapons first and um, I like the way it works so I've uh, continued to use it. Um, I don't know if there's a matte version that would, would work better in some ways but uh, the gloss once you've got all the other colors on there doesn't seem to matter too much and it almost as if the wood's got a slight sheen to it maybe it's been oiled or something so 
So after leaving the Cryptic armor shade enough time to dry, it's time to put in the first layers of metal. So we're going to use scale color, so metal alchemy, and this is black metal. So there's a few metallic parts. We've got the large over the toe style stirrups, whatever their official name is, I'm not sure. Parts on the horse's bridle, and then of course you've got the carbine as well. So next stage, I'm just going to pick out the buttons along here, the very very small dots of scale color necro gold. Then the next stage is just to add a good old known oil, just a small amount to some of the metallics. So now we have all of the base colours down and all of the shades down, so it's a case of going around now and picking out certain areas to highlight. So the first we're going to do is a tiny little bit of red on that bit of material that's underneath the saddle. I'm going to use um, Evil Sun Scarlet. And that will be the only highlighting I'm doing on that. Then the next stage will be a tiny bit of highlighting on the blue on the trousers. And I'm using this Fantasy Games, another scale colour paint. Um, and draw a little bit in turquoisey. That's um, some of the paints you get from them are in uh, Spanish rather than uh, English. I don't know what the English name for that is, but it's some kind of turquoisey blue. But it's SFG thirty one. Okay, very subtle. Not much needed there at all. And then the final quick of the quick highlights will be on the hat. And I'm going to be using the orange brown from Model Color. So, next one up is going to be the skin. And for that, I'm going to be highlighting fairy flesh. Now, there's not a massive amount of need to do that. Sometimes, um, depending on how the pre-shade's gone, sometimes you find that it's uh, a little bit too dark after you've applied the dark oath flesh from contrast. This isn't too bad, but I am still going to lighten up a couple of little parts. And then what I usually tend to do is glaze it a little bit down again with the same contrast color if it's looking too, too bright. It's a bit more shadowed on the side that's uh, under the brim of the hat. The side where it's pinned up, you can just see him slightly more. Um, and that will do. So the next stage now will be adding some highlights to the horse flesh. And for that, I'm going to be using a chocolate brown for model colour. And that's the chocolate brown and it's just very very subtle just picked up some of the natural highlights that have been in place because of the wild wood going over the pre highlight I um, just want to light it up in a couple of places so I've mixed a tiny tiny bit of grey sear in with the chocolate brown just to provide the odd little extra edge highlight because it is quite dull And the next stage is to highlight all the black stuff. Um, I want to do it fairly, very quickly. Again, bearing in mind that this is a tabletop 
a little smaller than 15 mil miniature and you definitely can leave it but I just want to add a little bit of extra highlight in certain areas um, and that will also include the mane and the tail so for that I'm using a scale color graphene gray right we're nearly there now so the last two stages I just want to brighten up the bedroll a little bit and just differentiate it between the jacket and what's on there. So all I'm using is a little bit of white. I'm using a scale colour. You could, you, you could use anything. Now these would have been lots of different colours, um, but at, at this scale, I think making it a little, a little bit brighter just helps it pop a little bit, stand out from the other details on the miniature. And that's that done. And then the final stage will be just to freshen up some of these metallics where I've, I've put the, the wash on them. So I'm just going to go in with Game Air Silver uh, and just add a tiny little highlight in certain areas. And there we are, apart from the basing. So as you can see, a really, really basic paint job. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's used an awful lot of colors um, and you could do it much more simple without uh, adding any of the highlights and it would still be fantastic in terms of a gaming piece as well. So what I need to do now is add this final one to the, uh, the bases that I've been doing. So there's a space on that base. Um, and then I'll come back to you at the end and uh, show you some pictures of them all ranked up and you can uh, you can see what they're like. I will talk you through the basing that I'm using, but I won't do a, a demonstration of that. Um, most people do their own basing, and on my earlier videos you can see that. So I use Scale Color Petroleum Gray um, first, just on the base after it's been primed. Um, it means I can be a little bit loose with the, the next stage, which is adding um, Vallejo Earth Texture Dark Earth. Now Vallejo do a number of different big large pots um, for sort of deer armor and basing and things. Um, the, the earth textures are probably most similar to the Games Workshop kind of sterling mud type things. So I use this first and that's quite thick um, and it's got a high pigment content, high paint content in it, which gives you good coverage. But even then by placing the, the pre-layer of petroleum gray means that if I do miss any little bits, it's only brown showing through. Then after that's dried, I apply a, a layer of Agrax Earthshade fully let that dry and then I'll next come in with um, some light Senna Vallejo pigment now I just brush this in um, and by doing that it kind of takes away that look of um, sand and wash base that you, that's very common on gaming miniatures this makes it look a bit more deer armorish I think um, and just gives it a slight change in texture but after that's dry I put a few spots of this on now this is slightly different to the earth texture this is thick mud um, it's more of an effect rather than a base layer if that makes sense um, you can completely cover a base with it absolutely but there's lots of different ways you can can use it and just by kind of dabbing it on in spots just makes it look like the ground's a little bit more mixed up when it if you put it on very thick it looks wet if you dab it on a little bit and stipple it um, it just it looks a, bit, a little bit drier and just add a little bit more change and it just takes no time at all there's lots of lots of stages here but they're really really simple and it's a lot simpler than, than painting sand on there and trying to dry brush uh, and I finally end up with two lots of two millimeter tufts from my favorite tuff maker at the moment um, um, wall paint figures by a gentleman by the name of Stuart I <laughs> have that's not why that's not why I like them best they're just fantastic quality they're good value and they're pretty consistent as well and they're very sticky um, some tufts I find that once you've taken them off you need some super glue and maybe that's the best practice anyway but I find these are well and truly sticky enough just to pop straight on after taking them off with tweezers but anyway so now you can see the pictures of the unit all based up so three stands um, I won't go into too much of the why I've based them the way they are um, I'll probably save that for a vlog I already mentioned it in one of my vlogs but they are based four miniatures to a stand rather than the five that sort of comes as in the pictures of the box from from Warlord Games I just like the way they look. Um, I think four spaced out quite nice rather than sort of rammed in close together, but it's a personal thing. And of course, they go further that way anyway. But I think as a mass effect, 
um, the methods that I use um, and have used in that in that tutorial show you can get quite quite a nice looking cavalry unit without spending too too long. You obviously don't you can easily get away without doing any of the the, the extra highlights and, and just use the zenithal and the contrast paints. It's really really good for that. I definitely find a good zenithal black, grey, white. Um, especially with a dry brush on these smaller scale models works fantastically with contrast and I think you get a better kind of quality extra sort of shadow in there because of the natural shadow than you would say just going contrast over a flat grey sear or any of the other colours that, that Games Workshop recommends on their own. I just think you get a slightly more um, artistic look but it's all up to you what you go for. Anyway hope you've enjoyed the video hopefully it's been useful for you in one way or another. Thank you very much for watching if you are new to the channel there are other painting tutorials on there there are other periods on there so please do take a little look around and see what we've got on there thanks very much for watching please like share and subscribe and i'll catch you soon